Okay, so if you've been following my blog lately, you probably have seen uh, my blog post about PhD Virtual Backup version, version 6, which was just announced a few days back. Uh, one of the nice features that was released with that is instant, instant VM recovery. In this video, actually, I wanted to, do, uh, to demo the instant VM recovery. It's a really quite nice feature. It's actually, it allows you... Normally, what's happened when you actually want to uh, recover a VM, you actually go to your backup and have to restore the VM. So if you have a 200 GB VM, for example, it takes you about five to six hours to restore it from backup, then power it on. Whereas with instant VM recovery, all you have to do is you could power it on from the backup itself in like less than a minute usually. So it's a real nice feature. It's actually saved you a lot of time when you have that one critical VM failing on you. And this demo, so let's look at the demo environment that I'm doing here. So in my demo environment, I have two SXI hosts, and these actually are nested SXI hosts. So they actually running, they are running as a ver inside a virtual machine. So they might be a bit slower than what you would have in your production environment. So if the demo go a bit slower than expected, uh, that's that's the reason behind it. Each each of these SXI hosts have two small data stores in here, as you can see. And here's the have I have the BHD virtual backup appliance. Looking at the setting of the appliance, as you can see, I have one extra disk that's been added to there. And this is, will be my backup destinations. So actually, for BHD virtual backup, you have three types of backup destination that you can use. Uh, the first one is, as you can see, VMDK file or virtual disk. The other one will be SIFS share. The third one will be NFS share. So for this demo, I decided I'll use just the VMDK. Okay, so let's look at the, vir the BHD virtual backup interface itself. So as you can see here, that's it's showing like it's connected to the appliance. It's, sh it's showing how much use space and so on that I got to, I, I have used so far. So look, let's look at that particular uh, feature that I wanted to speak about, the instant VM recovery, which is here. So actually earlier, I have took a backup about uh, from the VM base Windows 701. A, the way I took the backup is normal. I, mean, I haven't actually have to do anything which is special about it. Just to show you the process of doing a backup, I'm not going to do. A, I'm not going to start a full backup now, but I'll show you just the process. Just show you there's nothing special or complicated about doing a backup to enable a v, uh, instant VM recovery. So all I would have to done, just backup virtual machine, choose the specific VM I wanted to backup. Choose next. Choose the virtual appliance I want to use for the backup. So one one thing which is nice about PHD virtual backup, you can actually have multiple VHD back uh, virtual backup appliances managed from the same console, which allow you to, to scale up e with ease. So that's make your life much easier if you if you have a larger environment. All right. So I'm going to use a virtual full backup. Uh, here you can do your scheduling, so I'm just going to do one time. Uh, here you can actually have verify your backups. So I usually like to use the full or the quick. At least I'll do one of method of verifications. Uh, it's like really nice to be able to verify your backup while they're happening. I mean, it's it's not worth anything that you backup every night while your backup is not working, so or is being corrupt or so on. So let's move on a lot. Here's the option to do application aware processing. I'm going to skip that for now. But for those of you who use Microsoft SQL or Exchange or stuff like that, this could be a very helpful feature. Here's just the summary. If I hit submit, the backup will start. As I mentioned, I have already done about one backup before this demo to speed up the thing. So I'm not going to actually do this backup. I'm just going to hit cancel. So now to actually, let's say my VM got corrupted for any reason. I want to restore it, but I don't have time all the time in the world to wait five hours, six hours to restore it. So I could actually done instant recovery backup. I choose the appliance I want to restore from. I choose the VM I want to restore. And I'm going to just add a suffix at the end of the VM name. So let's say instant 
recoveries. Uh, the reason I'm adding this is actually I wanted to have just uh, a different name than the original name because actually the original VM I still have it here. So I don't want to try to override that. So I hit next, I hit submit. So as you can see now we start trying to run the instant VM recovery in here. And as you can see the VM starts showing up in my in, in my left side here, so the VM is getting created. Oh, the, rec the recovery is still in process, so let's wait for it to finish. Alright, so as you can see, it's completed. I mean, that's take about less than a minute, as I, as I mentioned earlier. And this is actually with my really, really slow environment here, which is like nothing but a virtual environment, like a nested VA ESXi host. So now if I wanted actually to go and power on that VM that I have just recovered, So as you can see, in less than a minute, I were able actually to go and recover back from a corrupted VM without any problem. So this actually VM, if you're looking at it here, is actually running from back uh, uh, rather than actually being restored anywhere. Uh, so while it's boring on the Windows, let's go and look at the summary here. So if you look, actually most of it is running out of this data store which is nothing that rather than my VMDK file that you show in there. So it's actually mounted itself as a data store in here. And it's with the file in here. So actually whatever it's actually showing as a stored here is the differences that being whatever differences or changes I'm doing in the VM is being stored in this disk. The rest of it is just actually running from the normal backup which is there. Alright, so let's go back to that VM and see. Okay, so Windows still barring on. As I mentioned, I mean this is like two level nested ESXi servers, so you would expect the VMs putting up to be a bit slower than normal. Okay, while the VM is booting up, another thing I would like to mention, I mean the same feature could be actually used to verify your backups. So in addition to the verif backup verification that virtual back, uh, that's uh, that's VHD virtual backup could do for you. You could actually every now and then, if you wanted to verify your backup, you could just go borrow them on from backup and make sure they work and they operate as you want it to. So it's like really nice, clean way of actually making sure you're. You're, 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 you can always restore without uh, without having the nightmare of a VM being corrupted. So you can actually every week or so and go and go back to your backups, borrow on some of your VMs, make sure they come up as required and so on and verify them. I mean usually in, in the real world to verify a, like a, a virtual machine backup or verify even a physical server backup is a nightmare because you have to restore the whole thing and it takes a, a long time to do it. So here as you can as you are, you're able, as you're able to see in less than a minute, I was able to actually test my backup. So actually, if I wanted, I could just came, put the password here. Alright, so as you see, my Windows VM is running out of my backup at the moment. 
Okay, so one thing you would wonder, I mean, how long would this run from backup for, right? It's like, it's not the healthiest, not the healthiest place, nor the best performance place to come from, right? Uh, so your backup might be in a SATA drives or slower drives or so on. So that's not the place where you want your VM to stick in, right? So there's two ways actually to move this VM from the backup to your production environment. The first place, if you have like an enterprise license or enterprise bus where you have the storage view motion, all you'd have to, to do is actually come to that VM and say migrate and use your st normal storage view motion and move that VM to your production data store. So this is a production data store for example I have and I could just move the VM there and I, you could see in the bottom start just the VM start moving using storage vMotion which is a nice, nice thing so with the storage vMotion I didn't have any uh, I could move the VM back to my production data store with a zero downtime alright if you don't have actually storage vMotion VHD virtual backup have actually a nice feature called VHD motion which is actually not as good as storage view motion but it will do the job and it will have just a brief uh, downtime so you can actually go and wait till you have your downtime window maybe at night or weekend or so on and go and do that to move your VM from backup to production so either way you choose I mean that's you can move it with ease to your production and with that you can actually as you can see this have saved you the time from like having downtime for hours now you have downtime of minutes so you can have a much better recovery time objective so when your manager say you have to do RT of one hour alright that's that's could help you achieve it or even you could probably achieve even lower than that depending on your VM sizes and so on alright so that's what I wanted to show you for the day I hope you guys enjoyed it uh, you probably want to have go and grab the demo uh, from BHD Virtual and look at it, I mean, it's like really nice product uh, I like the feature I have shown you so enjoy it and if you haven't actually got to my vlog virtualizationteam.com I have actually posted about this and the link will be showing up at the, long, uh, at the end of the video so you want to read my post about what other features the product have and try it for yourself and leave me a comment alright you have a great day